All right, so today I want to introduce you to a very unique ball python combination. You may or may not have heard about it before. It is actually called the Urban Camo, and there's actually two genes that make up the Urban Camo. One of them is a fairly new gene. It's, as you probably haven't heard of it before, it is called the Sandblast, and you probably haven't worked with Sandblast a lot. There's only a couple people working with the Sandblast gene. As a matter of fact, it was the very first snake that actually had the Sandblast blast gene was purchased by Osborne Reptiles back in 2006 and he started breeding it he saw something really weird kind of popping out of this new snake that he bought and sure enough he isolated the gene and found that it interacts with the the het pied combination it's kind of interesting a lot of times you can't see het pied in certain combinations but if you mix it with certain genes you can actually see a pretty dramatic effect of the het pied and if you mix sandblast with het pied essentially you get the urban camo which is pretty cool you can also mix a het pied with uh, champagne and you get a pied looking snake as well which is pretty interesting so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring you over to the internet I'm gonna show you some stuff on morph market and some other websites and let's take a look at the urban camo alright so here's something you might find interesting this is the setup I used to do the screen captures to actually show you around the internet I actually upgraded my laptop to an HP Envy so it has better processing power so I can actually <laughs> do video, video editing a lot faster which is really nice and then in addition to that I actually upgraded to this big boom mic which is really cool take a look at this mic this thing is huge and essentially what I do is I put a pop screen right over the mic and it's clamps to my table it kind of moves around wherever I want it and then it's USB right into my laptop which is pretty cool then I use a software called OBS and I just use hotkeys like an F10 to start and an escape to stop and I use a mouse and that's pretty much it so let's jump right in to the laptop and check out some snakes all right, so take a look at this. This is actually the Urban Camo Ball Python. And at first glance, I'd say you'd probably think there was pied in there, but there is no pied. It has the visual pied effect due to the combination of having one copy of the pied gene, it's het pied, and the sandblast gene, which is pretty interesting. And the, the weird thing is, is this one is actually, if you take a look at the, the page this is on, I am over here at morphmarket.com, and this one, is sandblast and 100% het pied, which is kind of interesting. Of course, this is from Osborne Reptiles. So this is the guy that actually came up with, discovered the sandblast gene, which is pretty interesting. It's always interesting to see, you know, how people just kind of discover something new and, you know, kind of work a new gene into some stuff. And it's, it's funny because this really hasn't caught on. I haven't seen a whole lot of these out there and you, you see the price is still pretty high this one's a female still for sale for five thousand five hundred dollars so you can see it's still a pretty high-end project not a whole lot of people actually have the urban camos which is pretty amazing when you come over here this is an urban camo silver bullet which is it's kind of a, a, a it's an urban camo with some extra jeans in the mix you can see the extra jeans kind of give it more of a black. Sometimes you add extra genes in certain combinations and it totally changes the dramatic effect. And I would say you can still see kind of the pied effect coming through. The It's 100% head pied with the sandblast. If we actually take a look at this, this is actually a super cinnamon pastel on top of the urban camo, which is pretty amazing. And here's another example. This is another urban camo, and it's, the funny thing is on this one, this is listed as 66% head pied, but of course, if you had just the sandblast by itself, you wouldn't get these splotches of white. So, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of like when I'm looking at my normal ball pythons, I say it's 50% head pied, but you see the really strong markers down the belly, and you know pretty much for sure that it is 100% head pied. If you take a look at this one, Pretty much the same thing, a super cinnamon pastel on top of the urban camel, which is the sandblast and 100% het pie. This is, let's see, this was Osborne Reptiles. This one is actually Central Coast Python. So this one was actually from somebody else, which is interesting. And it's expired. I don't know. <laughs> let's see how long it's. 
first posted on, this is weird because it was posted not too long ago and it expired, which I'm not sure exactly why it would expire since it hasn't been on there for very long. So if we take a look over here, this is, this is Morph Market. And essentially what I did is I went to Morph Market and I clicked on filters and then I searched for Urban Camo. It's actually a gene listed in the filter. And when you hit enter and search, it actually splits it up between 100% Hat Pied and Sandblast, which is kind of cool. So you can actually figure out what some of the combos are by actually doing a search for the common name. And then when it actually searches, it splits it up. And at first, when I was looking at the Urban Camo, I was like, what in the world is the Urban Camo? Because there's not a whole lot of information out there. And sure enough, you come over here to Morph Market and you do a search and it shows you it's the Sandblast with 100% Hat Pied. So this is kind of interesting as well. So this is just a regular pastel pied ball python. So it's it's a pied, which gives it the splotches of white with the pastel on top. And if you really look closely at the, the color and pattern of the yellow on the pied, you can actually see an example over here, what happens when you add sandblast to that same snake. So the sandblast, this is a pastel pied sandblast. So it almost looks like someone took a sandblaster and sandblasted off all the color. And I think that's where they got the name. It's kind of like, it has like a sandblasted look to it, which is kind of weird because you look at something like that and it's like, you know, that's not really interesting. And then you start mixing it with some other stuff like the urban camo and you see really dramatic effects when you mix it with uh, uh, the 100% the head pie, which is interesting. And, and the interesting thing too about this particular snake is for example, if you take the champagne, which produces a pied-like pattern with head pied. If you actually produce a, a real champagne pied with two copies of the pine gene, it's actually a completely white snake. And in this case, you don't get the, the white snake. You just get a sandblast on top of a regular pied. I thought that was kind of interesting, a little bit different than the champagne effects. So this is kind of cool too. This is over at Osborne Reptiles. This is his website. I thought it was it's pretty neat. This is kind of his landing page here. And then he's got this page over here about the sandblast. The sandblast and the herbal cam urban camo story. So essentially what he did is he bought this snake right here, the original sandblast pewter. And then he's kind of has a timeline, 2008, 2012, 2017, all the way down to, you know, where he's producing some from 2017 some urban camos over here. I thought that was kind of cool. And he has this little story over here, which is kind of neat. He kind of explains the whole story behind the sandblast and how he actually got to the urban camo. I think it's always neat to, to see, you know, I actually have some genes in my collection that kind of pop out really subtle genes and it's really unexpected. And I kind of just ignore it and sell the hatchlings. And, you know, sometimes it's worth actually hanging on to stuff trying to isolate the new genes and then mix it into other stuff, see if there's something new with an added potential as far as what you can do in the ball python industry. So over here, I actually went to Osborne Reptiles on YouTube. This is pretty cool. He actually has a YouTube channel with four videos and 163 subscribers. I thought that was pretty cool. It doesn't look like he's real heavy on here. It looks like he started only eight months ago produced a few videos. The last one looks like it was six months ago. So if you want to come over to Osborne Reptiles and take a look at Brandon Osborne's videos, you can kind of see him actually doing a demo of some red foot tortoise eggs over here, which is pretty cool. See some stuff on his urban camos. Come over here and subscribe. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, you can subscribe there as well. But uh, it's, it's pretty interesting that he's actually here on, on YouTube, which a lot of people, you know, it seems like a lot of people that come out with new stuff are either on Facebook or something else. Not a lot of people are on YouTube, I'm finding. So another cool thing is actually come over here and just do a general search on the internet and look at the images for urban camel ball python. And this is what you get. You get, uh, it's, it's kind of interesting because you'll see some stuff here, pretty much more stuff here than you'll see on Morph Market. And I haven't really found a lot of pictures. I'm thinking a lot of people are actually doing this on like Pinterest and all these other websites, Facebook. This is actually a reptile forum, ballpythons.net. Uh, this is world of ball pythons. Uh, ballpythons.net. This kind of looks like this 
A lot of them are, it looks like on the, uh, this one's on Morph Market. So you kind of look around and see kind of the examples. This one is a reptile form in the UK talking about uh, urban camels, which is pretty cool. And I haven't seen a whole lot of people working with the urban camels. It's, it's kind of a, uh, it's kind of a hidden gem, I would say. Something to really look into and strive to, to really work and develop. I'd like to see this mixed with a bunch of other genes. I think it'd be really cool to work on this project. All right, so there you have it. That is the urban camo and the sandblast gene, first discovered by Brandon Osborne of Osborne Reptiles. And I'm actually surprised it's not more popular than it is. It seems like it's it's been developed quite a few years ago, but it hasn't really gained a lot of momentum. And I remember seeing the sandblast, I thought, I'm not sure I wanna get into something that kind of whitewashes out the sides of my snake. And then, you know, it's, it seems like these morphs come out, like when the bamboo came out, like Bobby here, when the bamboo Bamboo first came out, they started mixing it with, you know, Lessers and Mojaves, and they ended up with the blue-eyed leucistic, and then they mixed it with Pastel, and you couldn't see the Pastel, and then it kind of died down a little bit, because we didn't really have the potential. And then you start mixing it with, like, Pastel and Calico, and a lot of this really cool stuff that really makes the bamboos pop, and I think that is what really gets people excited about some of these new genes. I think they're kind of like sleeper projects. People discover them, and then they just kind kind of hang out in the background until someone produces something amazing like the Urban Camo and then everybody wants to jump in and let me tell you that sounds like a really cool project. Someday I may buy a sandblast and make my own Urban Camos. It sounds like it'd be pretty cool. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.